And who's going to use these tickets since you're already a season ticket holder? Uh, it's going to be for a family member and a couple of co-workers. Now you know that means they're going to sit in the Kentucky section, right? I know that, but they'll be cheering for U of L. <laughs> Go Cards! <laughs> Welcome to the Red and Blue Review. It is a buy or sell edition. Dare Burr to the Cat's Paws. Buy or sell. Those Louisville fans sitting in the middle of the Kentucky section of the Governor's Cup game, they'll be just fine. They'll be fine. I, I think UK bought 3,000, returned yep. 2,000. You yep. assume it's, they're going to be like on the DMZ zone. <laughs> <laughs> Just at the end of the U, and maybe they'll blend in with the U of L fans, so they won't uh, get in too much trouble in that regard. But yeah, they behave for the most part. See how the game goes. If UK were to pull off the upset, that may be the last place they want to be in that stadium. How we Lindsay buy or sell? Those Louisville fans will be fine amongst that sea of blue in Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. <laughs> well, the good news is they're right there at the edge of the stadium. So yep. if, if they get too obnoxious, you can just mosey them right off the end of the stadium. <laughs> I don't advocate that at all. <laughs> we welcome you to this version of the Red and Blue Review, and it is brought to you by the Kentucky Office of Highway Safety. And our friends are reminding you to click it or tick it. Next topic on our buy or sell edition of the Red and Blue Review has to do with this rivalry. Does this UK or U of O game a season make? As you know, uh, Louisville has won this thing once in the last five years, and if they make it two in a row, Joker says this is no time to panic. And, uh, it adds a little bit more because it's, uh, they're only 80 miles away. Uh, it adds a little bit more because it's our in-state rival. Uh, so, but uh, that's what I've noticed the most is how hungry, how committed, uh, how many guys are trying to lead in this program. Uh, that's what I've noticed, and uh, not so much, you know, because of who it is, uh, regardless of who it is. That's that's what I've seen. How hungry this football team is. Okay, I mean, we've been to five straight bowl games. We missed last year. Okay, we missed last year, uh, and that's what I've noticed. I don't, I don't, regardless of who we're playing. All right, Darryl Burr, buying or selling this UK U of L game does not make or break this season. I am. So I had to think on this. I am selling it because of history. Typically, the team that wins this game goes on to a pretty nice season. The team that loses goes in the tank. And U UK lost that game last year unexpectedly at home. Ended up five and seven. You in the SEC, you better win all four non-conference games, and they didn't do that. The season went south. So I am selling that. Howie Lindsay, buy or sell, this could make or break one of these two seasons. I'm also selling it. I think if, if they come out and they look like a stinker against Louisville, UK fans are just going to click it off. I'm yep. going to say, all right, basketball season, especially because there's a lot to look forward to in basketball again. So, yeah, I think this is a make or break game. And I am selling this as well. And the reason why I'm selling it is I think there's an opportunity here for Kentucky to pull an upset and still stink the rest of the way in the SEC. <laughs> and I think there's also a possibility that even if Louisville does in fact lose, they are going to win the Big East and they are going to make a Big East bowl game. So I think either way it goes, both programs are going to be fine unless Kentucky gets absolutely housed and then that's going to change everything. Topic number two, Big East did Louisville a big favor by naming them the favorites to win the conference championship in a very watered down Big East. The expectations are out there, and there's no way we can hide from it now. And, and everyone, you've been picked to win the conference. And but the, the, the key thing for uh, for our football team is just continue to work. Just don't get caught up in the noise in the system because, it, it, like I say, I always go back to two years ago. You were picked last last year. You were picked seventh. So now all of a sudden, how do you go from last to seventh to first in three years? And we haven't and with nine seniors. So you have to continue to work and. And you have to continue to understand it's all about you developing as a as a player and even even as a person. But it's, you have to develop as a player. And if we get that done, then the expectations you'll be able to handle it because the preparation is going to be there because we're going to get them prepared to go play. Now it's all about us. Can we just handle it? All right, Daryl Burr, buy or sell the Big East? Did Charlie a big favor by making Louisville the favorite to win the conference? Uh, I am selling it, but I don't think it's a favor at all because there is not enough history at U of L to be able to handle success automatically. Charlie knows how to do it because he was at Florida and you were always expecting. How is this team going to take it? I mean, it's easy when you say you guys are going to finish last. Well, we'll show you, and yeah. they go out and they finish three way tie for first. Hey, you guys are going to win it this year, mm -hmm. and the league's terrible. And you're going to realize some of those teams aren't very good midway through, and maybe you don't prepare like you should. So I, I don't think that was a favor at all. Howie Lindsay, did the Big East do Charlie a favor by herself? I'm selling it. And, and I've heard it, it theorized mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, Louisville's a young team. They needed confidence, mm -hmm. and so this is going to help them. I don't think so. Young teams, 
Mm -hmm. I think exude confidence in a lot of cases, and they probably need to be pushed back down to size a little bit. I I don't think this is a favorite at all. Yeah, and I'm selling it as well, and the reason I'm selling it is these same kids now, they're being told that they're so good they're not going to lose a game. The same bunch that slept walk through two losses at home and uh, Charlie, I always talk about this kid, this bunch having fake juice. I think yeah. it's a dangerous combination to tell some kids who've already shown that they don't really get fired up for some of these games that they're so good they're going to walk through the schedule. So I don't know that the Big East did Louisville any favor. But if you're the Big East media, what choice did you have? That's it. Yeah, you, you had no choice but to pick them a prohibitive favorite. Maybe a Rutgers that won a ball, you know, maybe a, a South Florida, but really Louisville was it. I mean, that Louisville was significantly better than the other teams. Well, the Wildcats have two quarterbacks on the roster who have taken snaps in big-time college football games, but they're being pushed for the starting job by a guy who hasn't even held a clipboard on a college sideline, and that is Patrick Tolls, who is a threat to Morgan Newton and his quarterbacking dreams. As a veteran, do you take it as a challenge when a guy like Patrick Tolls gets as much attention as he has before he's really even stepped on camp? Well, yes, and I think you kind of have to take it as a, as a challenge. I was Patrick Tolls three or four years ago. Um, Max was, Hartline was, Andre was, every, everybody, Randall, you know, and Randall's still Randall. So, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta just take it in stride. And um, you know, I wish Patrick the best, and I'm gonna help him out as much as I can. I think the one thing that people don't, um, that people are overlooking, is we got another quarterback, Jalen Whitlow, who's just as good, you know, and a, a guy that can really play, and he's really sound, and he's a sharp guy. So. <laughs> All right, Darrell, buy or sell. Those U.K. quarterbacks are threatened by tolls. They better be. So I'm absolutely buying it. You, if you want to play quarterback, you better be threatened by the fact that there is a high school phenom that the fans are already in love with sitting on campus and they want to see out there from the very beginning, as, as was the case with Tim Couch. He'll have to earn it. He'll have to go prove he can do it at this level. But, mm-hmm. yeah, that much hype. A kid like Maxwell Smith, who is a sophomore from California, the fans like him, the, the, the season was eh. And now you've got Patrick Tolles and there is such a buzz. You know they hear that. You know they have to know that that's out there. And uh, Howie, give me your take. Is Tolles going to be a threat to the two incumbents for quarterbacking? Absolutely buying this. And, and uh, here's why. The fans know Tolles. They want yep. Tolles. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think these other quarterbacks realize if they get out there and throw one bad pass, here come the boos. Here, here come the, <laughs> yeah. where's, where's Tolles? Why isn't he in there? And, 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 you know, they hear all the stuff. So he's, he's got to be a threat. And I am selling because I don't think a freshman can walk into this situation at the University of Kentucky and get playing time from guys who've been there three and four years. I, I just don't think he's going to have the, the uh, mental faculties to pull it off. Physical skills, no question. But when it comes to the speed of the college game, reading defenses, and figuring out his own playbook, I think that's a big task to ask Patrick Tolles to do because what you have to do then is dumb down the offense for everybody else as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to be too much of a uh, burden for Kentucky to carry in this crucial year for Joker Smith. Well, or Joker Phillips, excuse me. You don't know who the starting running back will be for the University of Louisville. Don't feel bad. Charlie hadn't figured it out either, but they do have four very strong candidates for the job. I like to narrow it down, and, and at some point we're going to. And, and if you look at it, you think about last season, all those guys are back. So you, you're figuring that at some point somebody's going to step up and say, hey, it's my job, and, and this is what I, I – I like for that to happen. I like for one of those guys to all of a sudden just step up and become that guy, become an every down back for us. All right, Darrell, buying or selling, Louisville, since they have four starting running backs, means means they really don't have one starting running back. I am selling that so fast it'll make your head spin. And the reason (laughs) being, running backs at the collegiate level, and you've noticed it in in the NFL too, there's no such thing as one back to carry 25 times Mm -hmm. per game. You will get your brains beat in. You'll lose the kid three-fourths of the way through the season. You need to keep him fresh. Everybody, it's going to become normal. You're not going to see tailback, fullback, you're going to see two tailbacks that you work in and both get lots of reps. And no, I don't, I don't buy that at all. Howie, buying or selling? I almost bought this. I had the paperwork laid out. Yeah. I had the pen in my hand. Yeah. I, I can't do it. And the reason I almost bought it, I have to sell it, uh, but the reason I almost bought it was, I think back to Bilal Powell and, and what kind of order that brought to everything, that he mm-hmm. was your guy. And then last year, I think, you know, they had three or four guys, and the, the, the theory was, oh, we've got this, this stacked running back. They really weren't that good. Mm-hmm. 
So I, I think this year's could be that good, though. I think they've added talent. I think they're better. I think they're a year older. So I think I think you actually do have four really good running backs. And I'm selling it as well because I think if you look at the Louisville football program in the last several years, with the exception of the Bilal Palace season, one of the strengths they had was the diversity at running back. Yeah. They had guys that could pound it in for short yardage. They had some guys who could get on the corners. Uh, they had a lot of uh, diversity in that backfield, and I think that would help Louisville to be able to uh, – Lean it that way again. Well, we're coming back. We'll tell you why you won't be hearing much from the Wildcats until after they play the Governor's Cup game. But if you want to hear more about Kentucky right now, Daryl Bird's got the brand new version of this, the football yearbook. Absolutely budding stars, and that is Bud Dupree. And, and that will tell you something about how the season is. Set out the what are you going to put on the cover of the yearbook? Did you quarterback? You don't know who it's going to be. Running back, they're all young. <laughs> Bud Dupree in that defense, that's where the future is right now, and, and we've got a big story on him. We've got a big Q&A with Joker, all available, 136 pages. Shop catspaws.com. Have you driven a Ford lately? Well, check out Allstate Ford's pre-owned inventory at AllstateTrucks.com. Large selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Also, a nice selection of Ford certified pre-owned vehicles. Allstate Ford, on the Waterson at Poplar Level Road. Buying your next VW from Bach and Volkswagen will be a great experience. No games or gimmicks, competitive prices, and a huge inventory make number one Bachman the place to get your Volkswagen. The all-new 2012 Jetta, an IHS top safety pick, is a great vehicle and fun to drive. Or get the sporty all-new 2012 Volkswagen Beetle. It's back and better than ever. Come to number one Bachman Volkswagen today to get your new Volkswagen before someone else does. To save more lives this summer, we've stepped up highway law enforcement. So don't forget to buckle up, don't speed, and don't drive under the influence. Because this summer, we're going to have Kentucky completely covered. Blue lights across the bluegrass. No excuses, no exceptions. I was on top of the world, but now I'm below it. I had everything going for me, then I had to blow it. My dreams, hopes, and aspirations were all in the grip of my hand. But alcohol caught my attention, and now it's in command. Join the club at Sam Swope Auto Group. When you service a vehicle at any Sam Swope dealership, you automatically become a Service VIP Rewards member. You get member pricing on parts and service, lost key return, and emergency roadside assistance. Plus, you can earn points that qualify you for discounts on your next vehicle purchase, up to $2,500. The best part is becoming a member is free. Become a member today at any Sam Swope dealership. Nobody walks away because everybody saves. Allstate Ford, seven-time recipient of Ford Motor Company's President's Award for Customer Satisfaction, with 13 Ford certified service technicians and a best-in-class parts department. Business or personal, we are the truck experts. Allstate Ford, on the Waterson at Poplar Level Road. I'm really excited about the defensive line depth. The defensive line should be the strength of our, our defense, should be the strength of our football team. Welcome back to Red and Blue. You hear Joker saying the strength of the Kentucky defense will be the guys up front. On the Louisville side, it could be the defensive secondary. Uh, Tommy Restivo says the returning players should have a big impact. Uh, obviously, Akeem Smith, um, you know, he's been a two-year starter for us, and we're expecting more things out of him this year. And then, obviously, Calvin Pryor started last year for us, uh, 12, 13 games, and we're expecting things out of him. And then, uh, you know, you got uh, Bouchelle, Adrian Bouchelle, that's played a lot of football this past year for us. And you got Andrew Johnson, Terrell Floyd's a young guy that played some football last year for us. We're expecting him to move up the depth chart. And then obviously, um, you know, you got a guy sitting that came in at a, from a prep school, Gerard Holloman, that we're excited about too. All right, Daryl, buy or sell. That Louisville secondary will shut down that deep UK receiving core. I am selling that so fast it'll make your head spin. <laughs> and not just the fact that Kentucky's receivers are, are a lot quicker. They're a lot better than they were last year. I don't think any secondary is shutting down any wide receiver core because the rules of the game have changed. You want to ask me how that plays out? Ask me how UK's offensive line plays. They have a nice game. The quarterback gets time. You're not shutting down anybody. 
All right, Howie, how about it? That secondary, will it shut down Kentucky's passing game? I'm buying it. I'm buying it in bulk. I'm going to Costco. <laughs> I'm, I'm renting a trailer and buying all of it I can. Th this secondary is so good. They are so fast. They are so talented. They're all back from last year. They're big-time playmakers. You've got corners, Andrew Johnson and, and Bushell. You've got the safeties back there with Smith and Pryor. I mean, this, this group is really, really, really good. And I, I tell you the other thing is they're only going to have to cover for about five seconds. Mm -hmm. They can do that because that defensive line is going to get to the quarterback. Well, and that's why I'm buying it as well. I think that this Louisville defensive front will be able to rush four. That's what they're going to try to do. If they can rush four, they can drop more back in coverage. I think that's going to be a, a tough measure for either Morgan Newton or Max Smith to push against. So I'm buying that defensive secondary could be a daunting challenge for the UK offense. All right, topic number two, defensive boss Rick Minter says the fans may have not seen it, but Kentucky really did get a boost after closing the season with a win over Tennessee. So it kind of sent us into the offseason, sent us into recruiting, a little bit propelled with a little boost. Nobody was happy about being 5-7, and seven, trust me. We were all disappointed that we let games get away, perhaps, that would have enabled us to go bowl eligible again. But uh, that being said, the, the Tennessee game was a little bit of a spark, just lifted people's spirits. Uh, some people would say, well, I'd rather beat Tennessee on a given year to end the drought. And if it, even if it means not going to a bowl game, the elation that was felt on this very game field uh, on that late November day. So uh, it gave us a spark, gave us a lift. It's not the end all. Just You just chalk one of them off and say, well, we got that behind us. Uh, it, should, it should convince our players that anybody can be beat. Uh, any drought can be ended. We got another one on the schedule this year that we're going to try to end. <laughs> Obviously, he's talking about that drought to Florida, mm -hmm. but let's talk about the drought buster against Tennessee. And, Daryl, do you buy or sell that Kentucky's going to get a boost over winning over against the Vols? I am buying it because of the alternative. Think of the alternative had they lost to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Wow, that would have been a tangible negative. There's no doubt about it. To go into the offseason with a win, and he's right. It was better to have beaten Tennessee than to have been 6-6 six and six and gone to some yucky bowl game where mm -hmm. nobody wants to be at and you play some team you've never heard of. You get killed you, by Pitt. And you win or lose, who cares? But yeah. to take care of Tennessee, that sent them into that dreaded offseason weightlifting mm -hmm. with an uptick. All right, Howie, give me your take. Kentucky, will they or will they not get a boost off beating Tennessee? I think I'll buy this in bulk as well. I mean, I, I think this is a, a big boost for them, uh, not only in that Tennessee game where they can finally go in and say, okay, this can be done, mm -hmm. you know. I think, I think, too, they can think, okay, if we snap that streak, we could probably do some other things. And, and yeah, I think in terms of confidence, in terms of just getting that monkey off their back for forever, uh, that's a big boost. I'm selling it because the guy who engineered that win isn't even on campus. Matt Roark has moved on. He's the wide receiver. They pushed in at quarterback. That didn't help Morgan Newton, and it didn't help Max Smith. And Patrick Tolles, if he plays, wasn't even on the team then. So I'm not sure uh, that they're going to get much of a boost as a, uh, as a team. And, Darrell, i got to ask you, I don't know that even the fans had a sense of a boost after that. I, it just seems like when that offseason ended, Kentucky switched so quickly to basketball mm -hmm. that the, the – the, ambiance of that win over Tennessee was really lost. No, I don't think you so. You don't agree? It didn't hang around forever, but mm -hmm. those couple of weeks, that was pretty sweet to be around Lexington, knowing not just that they did it, but how they did it. Are you kidding me? You put a wide receiver at quarterback, and, and yeah, Matt Roark is gone, mm -hmm. but it was the defense. The defense stopped Tennessee cold time after time after time. That's the boost. It's not that Matt Roark did it. It's that defense proved, hey, we can carry this side of the guy. We can carry mm -hmm. it for you. We can win and help you win the game. All those young guys went into offseason knowing what they had just pulled off. I tell you what also got a boost is Matt Roark's W-2 because he can <laughs> sell insurance in this state for yeah. the rest of his life. <laughs> well, Charlie Strong says he is tired of looking out at his team and seeing them sleepwalking through their pregame regiment at home, and he's going to change that this year. Just what we try to do, we're going to try to change up some things and see if we can just get it moving in the right direction. And just hope that we get home, that it's so critical that you, you get it home. And I tell him, I said, I don't understand how we go on the road and we play so well, then we get home and it's like we're, we're just sleepwalking out here. Daryl, are you buying or selling that the lack of fan excitement is a reason?